Good Samaritan truckie Craig Porter is gearing up for a mercy dash. We need to keep those farmers out there alive. He and his nine-year-old son, Dakota, are planning an epic drive. 3,000 k's out and 3,000 back. On this job, we can't afford to have any breakdowns. It's a charity situation, so everything that's being paid for comes out of my pocket. Egg beans, spaghetti. To get ready, it's a family affair. Did you still want me to make all those sausage rolls? On this job, there is no stopping at shops. There's no stopping at anything. We bought all our food. My wife, Rachel, has cooked a whole heap for us, and I also cook on the roadside. Um, I think that's it food-wise. Thank you. OK. Dakota, can you give me one of those buckets, please? Dakota is homeschooled, but he learns just as much when he's out on the road with his dad. Dakota comes on these ones. These are the special ones. He spends a lot of time in the truck with me. Is there water that comes out of that pipe? Yep, that's what keeps the truck cool, mate. I can help him. If the truck breaks down, I can help him fix it. Yeah, you can't replace it. Cheap labour. He's very good. He's learning real quickly. 4 a.m. An early start. It's time to get up. To beat the city traffic jams. You don't move. You just sit in the gridlock. Been up to five hours to get through. Teeming rain is also going to slow them down. But not as much as this. Wow, there we go. Bang. Straight up. Problem. I've flattened my battery. I had to do this once or twice before, but didn't think it would be this morning. It's going to be a long day. Just give it a try and see how we go, eh? She might fire up for us. That's what I want to hear. Another job underway. Put the dogs away, grab the guard dog, and we're out of here. Get him. Hey, big dog. Now the race is on to beat city traffic. Flat batteries cost us a bit of time here into the traffic. Not much fun now. We've got a couple of hours to get through this. This isn't good. This is not good. Sit back and relax and just enjoy the car park. Pouring down with rain. And we're going to somewhere that hasn't had rain for seven years. Finally, through the worst of it. Yeah, no, I reckon we'll be right. We'll be loading, hopefully, within the hour. Craig's picking up 82 bales of hay, weighing in at 44 tonnes. Donated by farmer Chris Davey. <laughs> All good. Nice early morning for you. Oh. So you're in? In. As the bales get higher, Craig realises he's creating a problem. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You can't go over 4.3, and the top bales make you go over 4.3. His load could be too high for road regulations. I'd be devastated if we can't get that extra load on. With the lives of drought-starved cattle depending on him, it's not as simple as just offloading the offending bales. Those guys up there are busting for the load to come in, but at the end of the day, if you can't do it, you can't do it. Authorities say where you can go. One bale means a lot, you know, and to, to drop 15 squares off is a big thing. Craig doesn't want to leave any behind. He has to come up with a clever solution. I just worked out that these older bales that have been on the ground have actually squashed enough. I'll be able to get 4.3. Now, i just got to get the right mix of bales on and we'll have no issues. So if I'm dead on 4.3, job's done. We can go wherever we want, however we want, nice and easy. Dad and son are way behind schedule. Now it's a race to get the stacking finished. All right, it's going to be a game of just picking them and choosing them to get it right. Lift it up, mate. I'm doing that. you, mongrel. I just got that started for you, Dad. I'd be lost without you, wouldn't I, huh? We're a bit behind. We're about three quarters of a day, which is not great, but it is what it is. We'll be able to catch it up along the way, hopefully. Don't go too high. At the Weybridge, it's Dakota doing the maths, and he's not afraid to let the boss know he's messed up. Didn't get it. You went way too fast. Oh, did I? All right, I'll back up. When he goes hard, I'll give you the tip. 
There's not much that he can't do. Do you want me to take over now? No. All right, let's get this trailer up to the border. Finally, they're on their way. Three, two, one. A breath of fresh air, but it doesn't last long. That dog needs to get outside. That man. dog stinks. <laughs> she needs, she to, needs to be man. outside in a hurry. They've been on the road for two days and still have 2,000 kilometres to go. Go put a fire in this truck's belly and get moving, eh? From here, they need a smooth run. Who's going? One of those fittings must have uh, come off the trailer, I reckon, Dakota. We'll go and have a quick look. This thing is out of air. Shh, shh, shh. Can hear air escaping in underneath the, the bonnet here. I don't know what's going on. I can't believe this. Craig and nine-year-old son Dakota are stuck with a broken truck. Something's gone wrong on the compressor. Don't know what it is. Pressure relief valve. Just have a look. It might have something a little bit of shit in it, maybe. Hopefully that's all it is. I don't know. It might just be that it's jammed up somehow. Just pull it apart, give it a clean up, away it'll go. Hopefully that's all the problem is. It's not a biggie, it's just time, yet again. Can you fix it? Sometimes, sometimes you can't. There'll be a gap there. I need you to put that screwdriver down in that gap, yeah? <sighs> Don't stab me. <sighs> no, we're gonna have to walk it. And just when Craig thought it couldn't get any worse, Oh, oh, you're shooting me. What? What just happened? Didn't he? Yep. Yep. I injured my knee a few months back. I was strapping down a load and slipped down and just got my knee twisted up and uh, I've torn my medial ligament. Don't pull me, don't pull me. Just every once in a while, you just get in the wrong spot, like I did then, getting up. Gives you an instant pain. Just grabs you, it's just what happens, eh? A dodgy knee and a sick truck. But Dakota's on the case. Down in there. Well done. Second crack at it and it just pops straight away. The boy gets onto it, flips it and it's done. That's how it goes sometimes, you just gotta take a breath. Let's just whack him back on and check him. Hopefully that was the issue. Craig's back in business. In a bid to claw back time, he's looking for the fastest possible route. Uh, this next little stretch is a bit of rough gravel from what I can understand. Never been on the road before. It's a little bit of a risk, I suppose, in one fashion, but it's going to pick us up a hell of a lot of time by taking this. and. We're already down a day. We need to try and get it from somewhere. A single lane gravel road could be the answer, but what state it's in is unknown. Been a bit of wet up here over the winter, so it could be pretty rutted out or not cleaned out. You just hope that the upkeep's been put onto it, otherwise we're going to find ourselves in a, a fair old mess. Craig believes he's on the straight and narrow. It's all been tidied up. Great. This is what we wanted. Smooth, beautiful. Uh, luck has changed. Our luck's changed. Back on the blacktop, he's making good time. But it's not all blue skies up ahead. Looking up ahead, it seems to be that we're running into a bit of rain. We've got a little bit on the screen. The clouds are looking pretty dark out there. It's not far enough north to help our people, but it may be a pain in the ass for us. We'll have to see what happens. Rain could ruin his load of donated hay. If we get too much water on the hay, it absorbs it up. It will rot. It can turn poisonous to the animals because it gets the mildew on the inside of it. Look, it'd have to be really, really bad rain to, to destroy it or do any damage to it. But you just never know. An overnight pit stop. <sighs> Feeling better or cleaned up. And they've dodged the rain. Burke is the halfway point on their epic journey. But it's a milestone they should have hit a day ago. A phone call from Mary at Janeville Station. Hey, Mary, how you going? And Craig's forced to break the bad news. 
we've had a couple of things go wrong along the way, Mary. But when I first started off, I had a flat battery and we got tangled up in some pretty bad traffic down in Melbourne and Rara. So it's just been a bit of a nightmare going along. But I'm in Burke now. Um, so I'm down in Burke. It's still a long way, eh, Craig? I don't know what that is. It could be about halfway. Is it Burke or what? Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, it's a little bit over. Just, uh, yeah, ba but yeah, halfway. Yeah, halfway. Mary is very anxious for our arrival, I think. She's, uh, as I say, she's, she's one of the ones that have been worst struck by this whole thing. And uh, she ran out of feed a couple of days back and I haven't seen it yet, but apparently it's better than this car park. Every day Craig's not there is a day Mary's cattle won't eat. So her cattle are doing it really, really hard and they just don't have the coin to go out and splash on hay. It costs an arm and a leg to get it up there. So they're just waiting for this. This is really important to her. So telephone conversations with Mary are enlightening. She was a bit disappointed that uh, we're not gonna be there today as we thought we would be. However, she's happy enough that we'll be there tomorrow. She's hanging out for it like everybody up here. What does that sign say? Three, right there. Two, two, one, Queensland. Hey, we're here. The further north Craig and Dakota go, the drier it gets. Nearly 90% of Queensland is drought declared. When you look out across these paddocks, they're pretty darn dry. But apparently where we're going, it's worse than this. Looks like there's been fires. Up ahead, the end of the easy road. From here, the bitumen shrinks to almost a single lane. We haven't got a lot of bitumen here, we're sharing it, so we need to get ourselves off as much as we can to get by and have no incidents. It's just a little bit nasty out on the edges, that's all. The last thing you want to see on these skinny outback roads, a convoy of trucks, all of them wide heading straight for them. One truck passed, then another. One to go. Put tyres on the dirt and Craig risks a rollover. a fair bit of trouble there because that back trailer did actually drop down over the edge a little bit. If I let it go, it could have tipped us. If you run off the road and brake or you panic, that back trailer is going to take over whatever's going to happen to you. If you back off or you get scared, you'll end up on your side. It's not just oncoming trucks that are a hazard. Drought-starved cattle feeding by the roadside. This is what they call uh, long paddock grazing. So these guys are out chasing feed. They just feed along the side of the road. That's because there's no feed up here. You know, nothing in the paddock. So these guys just hit the, hit the road. This is public land and you can do what you, you can do this. It's brutal, there's nothing here. There's nothing, you know, a couple of little shade trees and, and that's it. There's, like, we all love an open country and that's beautiful, but when you look and it's just all dirt, dust and dead grass, that ain't beautiful. A reminder why Craig's here. This is their livelihoods and it's just gone. These people, they've built a real grid, eh? You know, they believe in their farms, they believe in themselves. They just need a little bit of help. You've got to keep these guys going somehow because that's the strength of our country. Craig and Dakota have been in the truck for three days. They have about 200 kilometres left to go. But Craig's heard the road up ahead is bad. He's found out that this is going to turn pretty nasty. Uh, this road hasn't had any upkeep in a long, long time. So what starts off as just a bit of gravel apparently is going to turn into some pretty nasty bulldust. I feel sorry for the cows and all the animals that are here. There is nothing. There is barely any grass. Most of it's just dirt. And to just think that not that long ago this was prime grazing country. Unbelievable. This is the station they've driven nearly a week to reach. This is it. This is the ones. Go ahead, 
trucks just cover the gate now. Their arrival, a relief for desperate owner Mary. Can you open the gate from Johnny and look up and down there, please? To get in, Craig has one more challenge. They have a green crossing out there. Yeah. Not too far. I get cattle in and out. The road crosses a dry creek where there are sharp dips in the track. Cattle trucks get through here, but I wonder if low guts drop eggs do. Craig's worried his trailers are too low to get up the creek banks. The station has nothing big enough to tow them out. If we get stuck, 79 ton, 80 ton, and we get stuck, those little tractors aren't even going to scratch. They're just going to sit there and go, whoa, what do you expect me to do? Craig has no choice but to keep his speed up and go for it. Stressful for him. Hold on, man. But not for some. Oi, come on, big girl. Come on, traction up. Spin, but it's all right. We're good. Waiting for them is 75-year-old station owner Mary. Hi, at long last. Excited, overjoyed. Very good. Lovely people out in the world. How, are How you, far doll? did you have to come? Ah, uh, just over 2,000 k's. It's pretty dry, isn't it, out here? It's mm. pretty scary. It's a terrible lot of people, and we're all in droughted area, and we're all praying for rain and hoping for rain, but we're just not getting it. This drop is done. One more to go. What's going on here? But Craig and Dakota are going nowhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fit over it. <laughs> Anyway, and late to the next station. <sighs> I reckon I've I broke traction and spun it up and coming up that bit of a bank. Ah, oh, you. For young Dakota, there's nothing he can do for his dad. We're up. It's just this stupid old knee of mine. Again, let go. <laughs> just does it at the stupidest times. You can't whinge about it, you can't do anything, you just gotta keep moving, you know? For station owner Mary, finally she has some farm food in her shed. Fair bit. Not enough, but there's a bit in there, isn't there? Yeah, it's a bit in there to help us along. No, it's not a fix. No. It's definitely not a fix, but it's a it's help. It's a band-aid on the problem that helps a bit. That's it. Until the drought breaks, they'll all be band-aids. That's all we can do. That's mm, all we can do. All right then, Mary, okay, thank, thank you. you. Craig. You look after yourself, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And if you find any more on the road, lying around, turn around, pick it up and <laughs> I get back. Will do. 100%. All right, Dale. Well. There's one final drop to make at a neighbouring station. After nearly 3,000 kilometres and a week on the road, it's like driving to the corner shops. At Wagaduna Station, it's the same story. Barren land, grateful farmers... I'm Craig, how you doing? Neil. Hey, Neil. ..and hungry cattle. For a father and son, it's a special moment. My little man, Dakota, I couldn't be prouder of him. He wanted to come on this trip. He knew how hard it was going to be. He knew how long it was going to be. He's got plans of doing his own little fundraisers and whatever else for these people. And as a dad, you couldn't be prouder. Give us a cuddle, man. <laughs> it's been an epic journey. Oh, 
a father. Just proud of you. Safe in the knowledge he's done something worthwhile with his son. Teaching his boy the important things in life. Let's go home, eh? Let's go back to see Mum. <laughs>